especially our Christian sisters who are present here or any Christian lady, according to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 5 and 6, if you are going to the church, according to the Bible, you are supposed to cover yourself. You cannot show your hair. According to the Bible, right? So there is a hijab, concept of hijab in the Bible. So why do Muslim women, why do they cover? Uh, I would say that, you know, within the comprehensive guidance that God has given to us, one of the guidance, one of the aspect of guidance is modesty. You know, anywhere that we go, there is always a dress code. You know, I don't know about Nashville, but many countries, many cities, many states, we have a dress code. You know, when the, our children, when they go to school, there's a dress code. We always hear about, you know, kids are sent home because they're not wearing properly. We always hear about people uh, let off the plane because they're not wearing the proper attire. When you work somewhere, even in the church, any places, there is a dress code. So we say the dress code that God has given for humanity is the dress code of modesty, right? So why do women wear the hijab and cover themselves, uh, you know, as we see some Muslim ladies over here? It is a commandment that God has given two places in the Quran. Chapter 24, verse number 31, and chapter 33, verse number 59 to be exact. However, the concept of modesty in Islam is not limited to what we wear only. I cannot look and stare at person of uh, any one of the opposite gender and lust after them, right? Quran says to me and to the males, we are supposed to lower our gaze and guard our modesty. Chapter 24, verse number 30 says that. So, modesty of the eyes is mentioned, modesty of the ears, modesty of the tongue, modesty of the distance between males and females, right? It's a comprehensive term for both males and females equally applied the concept of modesty, correct? But modesty is not only limited to uh, Muslims or the Quran or to Islam. You know, our Christian brothers and sisters, especially our Christian sisters who are present here or any Christian lady, according to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 5 and 6, if you are going to the church, according to the Bible, you are supposed to cover yourself. You cannot show your hair, according to the Bible, right? So there is a hijab, concept of hijab in the Bible. Our Jewish sisters, according to their theology, they cannot show their hair, especially once they get married. Same thing with our Hindu sisters and sisters of other faiths, right? What about the Catholic nuns? When you see them, right? We say, you know, modest people, uh, what about Mary, the mother of Jesus, correct? Whenever a depiction is done of her, she's modestly covering herself. But the hijab does not, is not a hurdle for the Muslim ladies to achieve what they want to achieve. You know, all throughout history, we have Muslim ladies wearing the hijab, modesty, attire. They have made humongous contributions in the history of humanity. Let me just mention two or three quickly. The oldest continuous university in the whole world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records and according to UNESCO, it was made by a Muslim lady wearing the hijab. Right? Amazing, right? It was a Muslim lady who laid the foundation for the oldest continuous university in the whole world. Before Oxford and uh, Harvard, Cambridge, right? Vanderbilt or any campus, Muslim ladies of the past wearing the hijab, they were laying foundation to universities, hospitals and pharmacies. You know, Ibtihaj Muhammad, some of you may remember, she's a gold medal fencer, world champion. Wearing the hijab, she took part in the Olympics. So what Islam says is that our sisters should not be judged based upon their physical looks, the shape of the body and whatnot. We should judge each other based upon the piety, our spirituality, right? Our good morals and good ethics. So Islam is big upon modesty and that is reflected on the sisters and also me. I cannot wear tight clothes. I cannot wear transparent clothes. So hijab, the concept of hijab is there so we can preserve morality and chastity and justice and equality in the society. And that is the bigger, higher purpose and concept of hijab in Islam. Uh, thank you. Any final uh, statements? Well, again, the final statement from my side is, we, we first and foremost, we thank our Creator. 
So we as brothers and sisters, we can come over here, right? We can socialize and many of the barriers that we may have about each other, especially about Islam, they may go away. We can see the commonality and my prayer, our prayer for all the Muslims is that building on the commonality, we can make better societies. So two action items. Make sure that this is not the only time that we are visiting each other, right? Let's do it many, many more times in the future. And you can invite us to your Hindu temple, maybe to your Christian church. I would come there with my family from Chicago, right? To interact with you. Uh, and second action item is this. Exchange contact information with people of different faiths, with the Muslims here, make friends. But let your church, your Hindu temple, your synagogue, let's have some action items so we can work for some of, uh, some of the ills in the society, right? Eradicating poverty and racism, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. So let's join our resources, God-given talents together. That I would say would be a good task item and a good outcome from these gatherings. So again, may God guide all of us, may God uh, bless all of us so we can live as brothers and sisters Thanks for coming. The food is waiting. Thank you. Okay. Right? Uh. Here, right? We can socialize and many of the barriers that we may have about each other, especially about Islam, they may go away. We can see the commonality and my prayer, our prayer for all the Muslims is that building on the commonality, we can make better societies. So two action items. Make sure that this is not the only time that we are visiting each other, right? Okay. Let's do it many, many more times in the future. And you can invite us to your Hindu temple, maybe to your Christian church. I would come there with my family from Chicago, right? To interact with you. Uh, and second action item is this. Exchange contact information with people of different faiths, with the Muslims here, make friends. But let your church, your Hindu temple, your synagogue, let's have some action items so we can work for some of, uh, some of the ills in the society, right? Eradicating poverty and racism, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. So let's join our resources, God-given talents together. That I would say would be a good task item and a good outcome from these gatherings. So again, may God guide all of us, may God uh, bless all of us so we can live as brothers and sisters. Thanks for coming. The food is waiting. Thank you. Okay. Right? Uh